to talk about a company in the north of Ireland that's called Harland and Wolf. The company was founded in 1861, it's 158 years old and it used to manufacture ships, artillery and tanks in the past. It's now more into wind turbines. Um, seven, actually 75% of the company is based on offshore activities such as wind turbines etc. So the question really today is, they're talking about nationalising the company. There's only about 135 employees at the moment. So my question to you is, would you as a business person with your experience, would you nationalise the company? Well, a company like that, that uh, manufactured um, defence um, products like uh, tanks and all the rest of it, that probably aided their war effort, the two wars that they were involved in, uh, that, that uh, Britain was involved in. So they were probably essential uh, for the health of men in defeating the forces of evil uh, that were trying to dominate the world and eliminate uh, Jewish people and, and other sort of people that they deemed unfit, uh, handicapped people and perhaps older people as well. Uh, so, um, so therefore they had a, they have a, a good history uh, in, in what they produced. Now, uh, nowadays uh, 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 they did employ a lot of people uh, in their heyday I think upwards of 30,000. Mm -hmm. So, um, and also, uh, just anecdotally, um, they had, um, they, they produced ships, uh, of course, of all shapes and sizes. Uh, but one of the ones that they did uh, produce, and was supposed to be nearly the best in the world at the time, uh, was the Titanic, which was a great ship. And it was launched in Harlem Wolf, and I presume the royalty uh, launched it and threw the champagne or whatever to do to launch a ship and, and give it its name. Uh, but the Titanic, unfortunately, has gone down in history as being a disaster. Now, when I was young, part of the reason for, uh, rather, part of the reason for the fact that it sank was that. There was a few factors involved. One of the factors was uh, that the chairman of the um, line, uh, the White Star Line, which had commissioned uh, that ship and had commissioned other ships that were successful, I think the Queen Elizabeth and all these ones, uh, that um, the chairman of that uh, organisation was on board, as well as uh, influential world leaders at the time in business and in, in every other profession uh, plus there was a sizable proportion of Irish immigrants on it in what they call steerage which means that the accommodation might be <laughs> what would they call it first class but nonetheless they were traveling uh, to the uh, to that uh, to America now uh, they were warned as they approached, uh, as they crossed the Atlantic, uh, by other shipping that there was icebergs in the Atlantic. Uh, so that message was passed to the captain. Uh, the uh, chairman of that uh, White Star Line, I think, instructed the captain to go full steam ahead because they wanted to reach New York and break their previous record, wherever it was by one of their other ships. So that was the major factor in the fact that uh, they, they hit a submerged iceberg and sank with the loss of over a thousand lives, including the wealthiest man in the world at the time, uh, Astor. John Jacob Astor. Oh, jo oh Jacob. Uh, so John Jacob Astor and uh, he lost his life. Now, uh, there was court cases in the US after it and that chairman of, of the White Star Line, his reputation was ruined and he never survived uh, because there was negligence uh, cited. Uh, that they were warned about icebergs and didn't take prudent steps. We were talking about prudence and other matters there earlier as regards this country and the growing of vegetables. The same thing applies to anything we were speaking about prudence as regards Google 
and in this case prudence as regards ships. Uh, there was a lack of prudence there in the way it didn't take account of the dangers of icebergs because the icebergs don't always stick about it, the ocean, they can be submerged as they were in this Very case. Very deeply, yeah. Yeah, and they were, they were massive. Now anybody with any knowledge, any captain of a ship with knowledge of what the hazards were in the ocean, it want to take care and he didn't take care with the consequences that happened. Also, as regards the Titanic, it was said uh, by people that uh, when it occurred uh, that uh, the uh, majority workforce in the shipyard were of the Protestant persuasion and some of them quite sectarian in their attitude and they had written something as regards to hell with the Pope. Now what way they fashioned it, it was the way it was worded and uh, that was considered uh, by some a factor in the fact that what happened. You cannot blaspheme like that. It's a bad omen. A very bad omen. Uh, that's uh, that was was said, and uh, I don't regard it, regard it as ever have been denied. Um, so, uh, anyways, that, that was about the Titanic. So I just digress from the overall uh, objective that we have in discussing this Harland of Wolf. Absolutely. So I suppose the question really is: um, Should we not? Should it be nationalised? Um, for there are. Benefits to it, for example, it fits in if they were creating wind turbines, and we've said that they're seventy five percent of their business is that now. It fits in with the railways, the post office, the communications, electricity. So it will actually bring down the cost per unit to the government to cuts out the middleman. So in well, that from, sense, well, from, the, from actually from the point of view of providing electricity, yes, uh, it certainly would because um, um, it has been it has been publicised that the private interests that have supplied these wind turbines and all the rest of it uh, in, the, in the North Sea at prices very low comparison to, um, to, 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 um, to, to, to what actually the cost of them should be. Uh, but these are private um, companies and they intend to get a return. Uh, which they will get a return, but it will result in electricity bills in the UK uh, being increased by up to 100%. Yeah. So that's the downturn, and this is the, exactly the reason, in some ways, well in most ways, as to why it should be nationalised, because you need to take a long-term view. Uh, the short-term view, obviously, is the disaster. And uh, the any time yeah. there was a short-term view taken of anything, disaster looms. Uh, the fact that um, the, the government in Britain has taken this short-term view about the cost of uh, uh, constructing and installing these electric, these windmills and tur turbines uh, is going to be down the road a very high price to be paid for, for, the, for the private sector to be supplying those. It, if it's to do with electricity, it should be a national enterprise. Nationalised enterprise. Generally lowers prices. Absolutely. Okay, thanks very much, John. Thanks very much.